Thanks for the intro. Um, yeah, we're super excited to be here today, being part of this uh, really great lineup. But before we get started, um, I'm Massimo, that's Rian, and uh, hey we're Superhero Cheesecake. Yeah, and Superhero Cheesecake is a boutique creative studio founded right here in Amsterdam. And currently, we're a team of about 35 talented digital craftsmen and women. And we work together with agencies and brands from all over the world to create amazing digital experiences. And um, for those who do not know our work yet, here's a short overview. But uh, yeah, enough about us. Let's get started. Yeah, to us, this is what our industry is uh, starting to look like more and more. And um, we see a lot of similar websites popping up and not that much exciting work being released. And maybe it's because uh, we are getting old, but we, we remember the web as a creative place where crazy things were possible. And that's why we want to talk to you uh, about the standardization of the web. I mean, today every website looks the same. And um, too often we see websites like this. Feel really static, um, a bit like templates, and using the same tricks over and over again. Big video headers, images, um, it's just not that exciting. And uh, there are multiple reasons for this to happen, and, and some of them are good, some of them are bad. And the first thing that we see is um, that UX best practices are being implemented. And of course, that is mostly good. Um, they're called best practices. Um, but next, we have system limitations. And what we're seeing is that standardization is also happening with the tools that brands are using to run their website or e-commerce. And that means that a lot of the designs are being dictated by the abilities and inabilities of those tools. But lastly, also, design trends, just like like these, like this is something that's happening right now a lot. So uh, thank you, Dave, for pointing that out. Yeah, and another important reason um, is that the way that we use the web in our daily lives has changed dramatically. Um, like 10 years ago, brands still created cool-looking look web experiences as a form of branded creative content. And, and this is mostly where the boundaries were pushed and, and creativity happened. And we're going to show some cool examples of that later. But nowadays, consumers' uh, attention is divided between so many different types of media, and the role of these campaign websites has played out, um, because it's pretty much impossible to have people actually spend time with them. And what we see is that, uh, that there are more functional websites uh, being released, and, and for a lot of brands, these are really critical there to their success. So the stakes are really high, and this scares brands. Um, they're, they became more and more risk averse, and, and they have put their faith in the hands of uh, people like SEO specialists, uh, various kinds of consultants, and uh, IT managers. And, and these people tend to apply the same mantra to every brand. It's all very functional, and there's little consideration for the emotional experience that is so important. So, how did we end up here? First of all, I think it's really important to acknowledge that um, you know, the web always evolved. New technologies came up and, and it gave us like new possibilities to interact. But also consumer behavior is constantly changing and it's, it's clear that standardization sort of like elevated the whole level, the overall level of the web. Um, and over the last few years, like, yeah, well, we've seen crazy things like unusable interfaces, like super long intro animations. Yeah, and sometimes even preloaders needing their own preloaders, and <laughs> that's something that mostly happened in the flash days. But before, before we go any further, um, we kind of want to take you through like a brief um, history of the creativity on the web, and just show you some highlights and, and milestones that, uh, where creativity really peaked. So let's start at the beginning. <laughs> we came a long, long way if you compare with where we are now. This is, uh, 
You know, this is where we started, the very first website ever. <laughs> it's just plain text and links and just that. But a year later, we, we had a, well, a small breakthrough. Like we, suddenly we can use imagery, and even though this is not really that sexy, well, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but you know, it, at least it's a start. So over time, the web became more visual, and well, maybe we shouldn't trust everyone with the, the amount of freedom. <laughs> but um, yeah, well, in 1994, there was a next step. Yeah, and th that year, um, the web was finally used what it was intended for. <laughs> but <laughs> we won't go into those details. I think it's a little bit too visual. Yeah, and then in 96, advertising discovered the web. And you're looking at one of the first campaign sites ever um, for Space Jam. And for what was possible with the technology back then, this, this was really impressive. Just, just being curious, like, who actually knows this website? Can I get any? <laughs> Oh, that's not bad. Uh, uh, I'm kind of feeling old now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in uh, 2000, something really big happened. And um, that was Flash. So for the first time ever, we're, um, you know, we could do more than just static things. The, the only limit we had was actually our own imagination. Yeah, which wasn't always good. And these are just a few examples of uh, well, people going a bit crazy with audio, but also uh, animation-wise. Even the layout is kind of interesting. But for the first time ever as well, we can use our own topography. So, you know, people you know, went really over the top. But along the way, you know, Flash also matured and Things got more interesting, and you know, this is just an example like where people started to play with how can we interact in a different way, or, or actually, well, not clicking at all. Uh, another example is uh, an infinite scrolling website where you just like scroll down and you get random animations and weird interactions, but also a website like like this, and it's it's still one of my favorites, even though it's well, 13 years old. It's, a, it's Get the Glass, it's a campaign that really pushed the boundaries of creativity back then. And if you look at it, it's just so well crafted. And I just love the interactions and the beautiful graphics that are in there. But also, uh, these kind of things, like amazing interactive films that really became a thing. And pretty much, like Flash, like the sky was really the limit for creativity up until this point. This happened. Steve Jobs single-handedly kind of killed Flash with his open letter, um, arguing that the web should be open and not be based on plugins like Flash. But because of that, we, we had to take a step back and creatively, and we had to stay, take a step back towards well websites like this. And people people tried to be creative, but yeah, they were really limited with the technical possibilities again. But we moved on, and as always, we, we bounced back. And with WebGL entering the scene, suddenly we could do things that go like way beyond what we could do with the, uh, during the Flash days. And with fast internet connections uh, widely spreading as well, brands started to explore like, story-led experiences. And this is just a uh, cute example of it. But as technology always does, it moves on, it got better, and with mobile devices becoming, uh, becoming more powerful, we finally were able to apply first, uh, mobile-first uh, approaches to the, well, the experience of this level. So yeah, we've seen a lot of great creative examples from the past, and, and you would expect things to get even more interesting from this point on. But to be honest, we're a bit less optimistic about the current state of the web and what is to come. This makes us wonder, like, do we really stand at the doorstep of the dark ages of the web? Ooh. <laughs> well, maybe it isn't as dramatic as this, <laughs> but um, considering that WebGL is more powerful than Flash ever was, and modern smartphones outperform most computers from five years ago, 
the state of technology is such that we should be able to be more creative than ever. And don't get me wrong, we're not making a case here for bringing back those old uh, flash campaign sites that we just looked at, but we should ask ourselves this question. Shouldn't there be more than blindly following so-called best practices? And the answer to this is, of course, yes. Um, next to us being enthusiasts and, and, and we want to create amazing work, there are more compelling reasons to try and push things a, li a little bit further. And, and this is the first one. Um, brands should really consider their website as their flagship store. And that doesn't just go for e-commerce brands. Um, as it will be many people's main experience of a brand, both before and after a purchase. And in a winner-takes-all world, normal is nothing. So it's really time to stop being normal. And then we have this one. Um, research shows that when interacting with a website, the first thing that happens is that people have a subconscious emotional response. And, and this is the first impression a website makes, and, and that is based on a combination of design and content. And from there on, users will try to rationalize that feeling and look for reassurance. So triggering a strong, positive, first emotional response will make all the difference. And if you get that right, from that point on, users want to love your brand. So it becomes really a matter of not giving them reasons to think differently. And lastly, brand loyalty is inspired by creating moments of delight and exceeding customer expectations. And since for more and more consumers, the web is the main way of interacting with a brand, this goes as much for the user experience on the website as for the actual service a brand is providing. And as designers, we are able to create those moments of uh, true design. And for example, by creating really thoughtful micro interactions that really make people smile. And like every agency, um, you know, we've got our own way of working and well, we've got our own little secrets. Sure. And today we want to share some of those secrets uh, with you guys. Uh, and this is pretty much how we want to, how we kind of try to make digital work that really stands out. So the first one, um, and probably also the most important one to to realize is that there are no secrets. Like, there are no shortcuts. It's it's just hard work. And by hard work, we mean doing whatever it takes just to be proud of what you create and uh, put, really put your heart and soul in it. But also, um, it's really important to like hold yourself and, and others, um, others around you that, you know, to those high standards, which, which kind of leads me to the next point, is that also create an environment, a, a company culture, where like everybody shares the same values and everybody knows what we're, what we're aiming for. And, you know, that's, that's just half the work. Just ask yourself the question, what does quality mean to your agency? And this, this could be different for everyone, but you just need to be know what you're best at. Yeah, so when working with our clients um, to define, define goals and ambitions, um, we try to make sure that they're not just business related, um, but also creative. Because we believe that creating something that stands out creatively is extremely beneficial to reaching the business goals. And by setting those goals together, that makes the client understand the process and um, see the importance of spending time on getting things right. And, and when you've set that, those strategic goals together, um, it's really important that the creative approach is up to you as the agency. So, of course, you need to stay within the strategic boundaries and, and the creative needs to benefit the goals. But really, as professionals, we are the experts and we should prescribe the treatment, not the client. Pretty much what we want to say is, you know, don't allow the client to be the art director. Yeah, and, and this is an interesting one that we started doing quite recently ourselves and is getting us really great results. So what we do is we always assign a group of project owners to a project that together will be fully responsible for the project approach and solving uh, the problems that might pop up. And, and this team has a weekly meeting, and the first item that gets discussed is always project quality in its broadest sense. So they could discuss the visual design, the UX, uh, motion, anything that has to do with quality. And uh, the powerful thing here is that it allows for creative input from designers and developers right from the start. 
And that results in a really good mix of functional and creative thinking all the way through to the launch of the project. And yeah, this is probably something that, that a lot of you will recognize. Um, and it, it's always difficult when you have to work with existing systems on the client side or you rely on uh, in-house IT teams to set up integrations. And if we are not careful, a lot of really good creative ideas get killed because yeah, what we call CMS says no. <laughs> <laughs> And, and that's exactly why it's important to establish a relationship with the IT teams that you're working with. Because ultimately, you will need to work together to find the areas where there is opportunity to do something special, or find creative solutions together to make the impossible possible. Yeah, like every, every designer they can have a great looking uh, dribble page, but not every designer see their designs become reality. So that kind of like leads me to the last point, is that craftsmanship still really matters. It's, it's all about those little details, those clever little micro interactions, those yeah, smooth animations, nice transitions. It, it all plays a huge, um, a huge part in triggering that emotional uh, response, and it's so valuable. And to make this more tangible, we, uh, we have a few examples. And this is the first one that we want to share with you. Um, and this one, we work together with Wire, and they're a manufacturer of high-end yachts. And uh, they asked us to completely reimagine their website um, because it was failing to engage users on an emotional level. And their ultimate goal was to strengthen their brand online and, of course, generate more leads. And this is uh, yeah, one of their uh, product pages of the previous website. And Pretty much, it's a one-on-one -on -one design of like the brochure. Um, everything is really static, really functional, and like the thing that we're really missing is that that little bit of like emotion in it. So this is what we did to it, and uh, as you can see, um, there's a really detailed and nice page build-up, and there are tasteful animations, and and we think that's really important because it does justice to the craftsmanship that goes into the actual product. And the website site should really reflect that. And then next to that, we have a really interesting uh, layout that's not that standard. Um, and, and that sort of really makes it like a, a dynamic design. But, but next to creating a page that, that just looks good, um, a lot of thinking went into this uh, project. And, and everything you see is there for a reason. So for example, the video on the top um, it's not just a video, but it shows the product in its, uh, its natural habitat, so to say. And it, it really gives you an instant overview of everything that you can do with it uh, without having to go through the whole page. And then underneath, we have some of the key product characteristics. Um, so to be able to really understand the product in terms of, like, will this, this both fit my birth? Um, and, and can it take me from Cannes to Monaco and back? And, and those are, of course, real concerns. And then the more people will scroll, the more engaged they are, and the more details we will give them. So that goes up until the point when they can start to really interact with the product. Here we see some more details, and then here you can actually explore the layouts, and, and uh, even further down, you can uh, discover different colors. And we always keep the request brochure button in view, uh, so um, users can uh, decide to get in touch with, with Wire at any point in their uh, journey. And this is another important uh, optimization that we made, and, and it's adding a really clear and focused navigation structure. So there is no clutter and distractions, See, we're missing the menu now, but <laughs> it, it gives you a really quick overview of the, of the product. Let's see if we can bring it back. Yeah, here we go. Um, and the outline that we're using with the boats is, is um, really helping you to understand the different products and the uh, sort of the, the features that they have in terms of size and layout. But the results were also pretty amazing. Uh, Time, people kind of spend double the amount of time as be before. And also, we were on track to hit the yearly target of, for, for leads, like within six months. Six months, yeah. So that's, that's kind of really impressive. But um, I also want to talk to you 
talk to you about um, our G-Star project. This is not a great example where we added that extra bit, bit kind of um, extra bit of touch. And G-Star Elwood, it's a, it's a, a line of uh, jeans, uh, well, made together with uh, Pharrell. And the main message pretty much was that there's a G-Star Elwood for everyone. Uh, and the brief was, was kind of simple as well. Create an interface that gives quick access to all individuals and, and the stories um, in some really uh, immersive way. And that, that kind of what was, was our starting point. And the campaign was wrapped in this old school 80s uh, VHS style. Um, and this, this intro video, we kind of like, we used it as a, just to introduce the concept to the audience. And we tried to push this theme consistently throughout the whole website. So just, just paying attention to like all those small little details where we just add a little bit of distortion into a preloader and, and have a play with the, like the treatment of the topography, but also the style of the, the product uh, photography. And, and the thing we add up to that is that we added physics to those genes. So like whenever you start moving and navigating, um, those genes kind of like move with you. And it, it just creates this really playful vibe. But when we talk about navigation, um, something with that like we were didn't want to do is like have this sort of like infinite scrolling website where you easily get lost. So we we um, we added those like edges and and gave it a sort of like analog effect, uh, which makes it all sort of like come together. Um, and these are just like small little examples where where we just create moments of delight and surprises the user with with something really nice. And finally, we got the, yeah, the product detail page. And the thing is that we also really wanted to make it an immersive experience and um, create this sort of like seamless transition where you go in and out. And this is pretty much where you can learn about, uh, like about the product and, and you know, the stories behind it and well, hopefully eventually buy a pair of jeans. But when you scroll, like, you see all these like, nice animations and it really helps it just to come to life. Yeah, so essentially what we're trying to say um, is that creativity is not just for campaign sites, but it's also a necessity for brands, and, and they need to go hand in hand. And whatever you create, don't forget to find a way to the user's heart. And that wraps up our talk. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, guys.